we turn to the lord and look to him in prayer before we look to his word loving gracious heavenly father thank you heavenly father for enabling us to gather together like this at your feet oh lord jesus you are in our midst your name may alone be exalted you must de- you must increase lord and we must decrease your will be done in hell in on earth as it is in heaven lord we are made of earth and lord we want your will be done in our lives as perfectly as it is in heaven for that lord we want to yield ourselves as a living sacrifice we want to humble ourselves and surrender ourselves to that most of the light that you are given us lord so that we can you can be so that you can cleanse us with your blood and flood our hearts with your holy spirit beyond measure and show us the glory of christ in the mirror of the word of god and lord to see you all the more clear so that we can become like you in our spirit to partake of your divine nature a little more lord to have life and life in abundance to have more of the life of christ of knowing you and becoming like you yes lord let your name be glorified in jesus precious sweet name we pray amen so for the last so many months we have been beholding the glory of the lord jesus in the book of hebrews and we are uh, we are in the uh, second last chapter of that book hebrews chapter 12 towards the end of the book of hebrews hebrews 12 and we were seeing verse 1 and 2 for the last uh, 102 or 2 or 3 weeks <laughs> so many things to meditate that you know we are not able to <laughs> uh, you know just uh, uh, you know to uh, uh, we are not able to speed and go further like that uh, and we were seeing all throughout the book of hebrews how the lord is calling us with a heavenly calling hebrews 3 1 heavenly calling to enter and dwell in the heavenly is in the most holy place that is in the very presence of god that is a true tabernacle and in the old testament moses was commanded to build a tabernacle but the true tabernacle that was a tabernacle made with hands uh, uh but actually now we are called to enter the most holy place of the true tabernacle hebrews chapter 8 verse 2 says that jesus is the minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle which the lord pitched not man uh the old testament tabernacle was a copy and a shadow of the heavenly things verse 5 and now we are called to enter the true tabernacle in our spirit uh in our spirit uh the holy spirit has come when we became born again and if we continue to yield ourselves yield our self will before the lord to embrace god's will in our life then the holy spirit will be able to guide us naturally speaking our own will or our own self is ruling our lives by default <laughs> uh, but when we choose to surrender ourselves when we take up the cross that is why jesus says in luke 9:23 unless you take up your cross daily and follow after me you cannot follow me you cannot follow me in any other way you cannot follow me by just singing songs or by just reading the word or just attending meetings or just hearing the word or just preaching the word or just doing so many religious activities you can follow me only through a surrender that is through the cross cross speaks of surrender surrender of what surrender of our own self our own self will as a living sacrifice in the old testament the sacrifices were dead sacrifices the bullock or a calf or uh, uh, gods or all, all were put to death uh, when they were sacrificed to god but we are a living sacrifice we have a we have still a choice we are the sacrificial animal in the new covenant and we have even when we are sacrificing ourselves every moment uh, we have a choice to do indulge in our own will or to surrender to his will so we are a living sacrifice we have that uh, choice the sacrifice the sacrificial animal when it was sacrificed 
uh, you know the sacrificial animal uh, after it is sacrificed actually it doesn't have any will and it is just burnt to ashes like that it is just burnt over there on the old testament uh, but today in the new testament when we surrender ourselves every moment we have uh, a will whether to humble ourselves or to harden ourselves whether to humble ourselves to exalt ourselves whether to uh, whether for us to lead our own life or whether to humble ourselves and depend on the lord and abide in the lord and to receive his life to lead us and uh, prompt us and lead us along the new and living way so only through a surrender uh, we can uh, dwell or abide in the most holy place in the lord's presence today uh, one person was asking me uh, is it because my relationship with god is not right is it is it because i am not in right relationship with the lord uh, that i am not able to enjoy god's presence so uh, you know there is no peace in my life he was asking like that from a he is from a Hindu, uh, christian background and um, and uh, then i was telling about i i, I told like this i explain i try to explain to him like this suppose if there is an air conditioned room <laughs> suppose there is a air conditioned room and in the air conditioned room of course uh, the temperature is set to some say 25 degrees celsius or 20 degrees celsius whatever so in the in that room in that suppose it is a cub- cubicle room or something and if you em- enter that room you know that Uh, you will be able to feel <laughs> the air condition uh, and uh, you know uh, that is the temperature it is very cool over there but outside it is very hot and sweaty and uh, very humid and sweaty and all so <laughs> it's like that jesus says in me you have peace uh, john 16:33 so in me in jesus in jesus presence there is peace and in jesus presence is the fullness of joy psalm 16:11 ah uh, and so in jesus we have the fullness of joy and the fullness of peace and the fullness of heavenly love uh, just as the father has loved me i have loved you abide in my love jesus says in john 15:9 so if you are in god's presence of course you'll be able to experience the love joy and peace of heaven so if you are not able to experience i am not t- uh, telling this to condemn you i was telling that brother i am not telling this to condemn you but rather if you surrender yourself and fully surrender yourself totally to the lord the lord can fill you with his spirit fill you with the joy of the lord and um, you can be in that you know so called air conditioned room or <laughs> what i meant is that in the most holy place <laughs> there is the presence of the lord you know where there is uh, you know uh, there is a peace and rest and uh joy and uh, love and fullness so the uh, when we are not experiencing that you have to acknowledge honestly acknowledge uh, we, of course we may know all the correct doctrines we know all the pattern and we all we know so many things of the bible we can explain to other people also but when we are not practically experiencing god's presence and his peace and his comfort and rest in our life but we are rather restless and you know we are fearful and timid and agitated and angry and irritated whatever be our religious background or our spiritual history of you know whatever accomplishments or how many people i have brought to the lord how much of ministry i have done or you know like martha say how much of chapati and chicken curry i have made for the lord and his disciples how much i have sweated and sacrificed for the lord but martha martha you are worried and agitated about so many things one thing is needed that mary has chosen she has chosen to be in my presence at my feet and she is at rest and jesus says come to me all who are weary and heavy laden i'll give you rest so if you are not experiencing the rest in our spirit and in our soul rest in our spirit in terms of the holy spirit flooding our heart with the peace of god and that uh, that ruling our soul so so soul also being at rest and uh moving according to the promptings of the holy spirit and our body also being the promptings of the holy spirit uh by holy spirit uh, influencing and leading our will if you are not experiencing that rest of course you know we may have to acknowledge that i have entered that so called air conditioned room <laughs> that so called presence of the lord 
in the most holy place so in our spiritual realm if you have bible says in galatians 5 25 uh, you know today i was uh, you know explain to him also that same verse if you uh, live by the spirit uh, galatians 5 25 if you if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit if you have life by the holy spirit you have uh, galatian christians you are born again christians you are living you have a life by the holy spirit in your spirit but you walk by the spirit you allow the holy spirit to lead you or uh, keep yourself in that place of surrender not be again subject to the yoke of slavery again galatians 5:1 but uh, rather you come under the yoke of jesus the yoke of jesus that is the word of jesus it is the will of jesus so you surrender your will and come under the will or the yoke or the uh, word of jesus and uh, when you when your will is crossing god's will there is a cross over there when you are taking the yoke of jesus and you will learn humility and gentleness from me and you shall find rest for your souls matthew 11:29 and uh, so that is the life of rest uh, hebrews 4:1 says uh, when a promise remains of entering his rest therefore let us fear hebrews 4 verse 1 therefore let us fear if while a promise remains of entering his rest any one of you may seem to have come short of it so entering his rest and verse 9 hebrews 4:9 for there remains a sabbath rest for the people of god for the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as god did from his so we are resting from our own works of the self so that the lord can uh, lead us and do the works of the spirit by empowering us in our spirit and uh, empowering us to exercise our will according to the promptings of the holy spirit Uh, in our the way we think the way we look at things the way we talk the way we do things and uh, that is the race that we are called to run so hebrews 12 uh, one we are called about we are told about this race ella and that race and that race is set before us we saw that verse the race is set before us the joy is set before us hebrews 12 1 and 2 race that is said before the joy is that is said before and we saw that jo- that word in greek said before is prakamai which means pre uh, al- already appointed uh, or destined uh, placed before uh, laid before prakamai and the uh, hebrews 6:18 also says about the hope that is said before us the hope of the promise of god and that promise is the restful life in christ so the hope that is set before us and the race that is set before us and the joy that is set before us and uh, this race is along the if we run the race our own way we will we will be uh, running along the ro- wrong track and you will be <laughs> you will not be able to come to the finishing point C- finishing point is the uh, throne of god where jesus has finished the race the throne of god in the paradise third heaven jesus has finished his race and has sat at the right hand of the father the finishing point hebrews 12 2 we read that he endured the cross and sat down uh, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god so he has reached the finishing point and he wants us also to reach there we can look at jesus uh, he is there in the third heaven at the right hand of the father looking at us with his loving eyes eyes of compassion and empathy and sympathizing with our weaknesses because he was also tempted in all points as we are hebrews 4:15 and uh, we saw the great witnesses cloud of witnesses surrounding us uh, in uh, hebrews 11 the old testament scenes so uh, let us lay aside every encumbrance we saw the weights that can slow us down in this race uh, not necessarily uh you know sinful things but also legitimate things in the eyes of the world but something that the lord doesn't want us to do or uh indulge in at that point of time uh whatever uh, things in our life whether it is of course we need recreation and entertainment clean entertainment and recreation and hobbies and time with the family and time of rest and everything we need even jesus rested while he was 
ട്രാവലിംഗ് ഇൻ ദ ബോൺ ഹി വാസ് റെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് സ്ലീപ്പിംഗ് ഓൺ എ ക്വസ്റ്റൻ ദേ വി റീഡ് ഇൻ മാർക്ക് ഫോർ ആൻഡ് ഈവൻ മാർക്ക് സിക്സ് വി റീഡ് ദ ജീസസ് ഇസ് കോളിംഗ് ദ ഡിസൈപ്പിൾസ് കം വിൽ റെസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ എ വൈൽ ബട്ട് ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ദേ കുഡ് ഇൻ ടേക്ക് റെസ്റ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ദ യു നോ ദ വാസ് എൻ ഇ ഡി ക്രൗഡ് ഓവർ ദേ ബട്ട് സ്റ്റിൽ ജീസസ് കോൾ ദം ടു ഹാവ് എ റെസ്റ്റ് ഫുൾ ടൈം സോ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് എസ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീയിങ്സ് വെൻ വി ആർ ഇൻ ദിസ് ബോഡി വി നീഡ് റെസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് വി യു നോ ദ വാസ് നൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ വാസ് ഡേ ലൈക് ദാറ്റ് വി റീഡ് റീഡ് ഫ്രം ജെനസിസ് ചാപ്റ്റർ വൺ വേഴ്സ് ഫൈവ് ദ വാസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് നൈറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഡേ ഈവൻ ടുഡേ ഓൾസോ ദ ജൂയിഷ് കലണ്ടർ ജൂയിഷ് പീപ്പിൾ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ദ ഡേ ദ ഡേ സ്റ്റാർട്ട്സ് വിത്ത് സിക്സ് പി എം so 6 pm the next day has started uh, and first the night and then the day that is uh, you know for us actually uh, uh, when the 12 midnight is passed the next day has uh, started but uh, you know for the jewish people they calculate from 6 pm onwards they say night and day and there was one day so like that so we need rest mm, but actually whether all those things that we do are encroaching or oh, uh whether they are, are taking away uh, our delight in the presence of the lord whether we are finding our joy in so many mundane earthly things or whether our joy is the pure delight in the presence of the lord or or the pure delight of his single hour that before i throne i spent like we sing, sing in that fanny j crosby song uh, draw me nearer and nearer to the cross where thou hast died so that encumbrance and all with the those things the social media or the internet and uh, you know the uh, entertainment uh, recreation all those things so even many uh, even uh, you know sometimes some uh, so called ministry or uh, even so many things whatever in each one of our personal life it can be many things which the lord has to give us light whether the, uh, even when they are lawful they are not profitable first corinthians 6 uh 12 we already saw that all things are not po- profitable i will not be mastered by anything whether our master is the lord jesus alone or whether we are mastered by any other things so encumbrance and the sin sin the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and pride of life sin that is our self will and uh, you know unchrist likeness uh, money on our pleasures the pull towards all that so uh, let us lay aside all that even from the starting point actually even if you need to run the race it's even from the starting point you need to lay aside all the weight and sin and everything then only you can even start to run uh, and these things easily entangle us uh, you know we know how easily we not uh, not really fixing our eyes on jesus all these things unknowingly and unknowingly and unknowingly entangle us and will drag us down and we might be backsliding or we might be kind of stagnant and everything and uh, let us run with endurance we need the endurance we could say long race so many years uh, before the lord comes and uh, so with endurance uh, there might be many obstacles many temptations trials misunderstanding uh, so many things we may have to undergo so many loss so much of uh, so much of uh, hardships diseases pain so many things so we need endurance and endurance uh is uh, similar to patience which is the fruit of the holy spirit galatians 5:22 23 says about patience the word is macrothymia and endurance the word is hypomene all are similar words endurance patience uh, perseverance uh, you know we need endurance to bring the fruit to maturity luke 8:15 luke 8:14 and 15 in the par- parable of the sower also we need Uh, they hold fast the word with endurance or perseverance to bring the fruit to maturity to have a hundredfold to give a hundredfold harvest for the lord we need the endurance of the lord uh, and the holy spirit alone can give us that endurance that is a christ like character where we are patient even when we do not see any outright apparent result all on a sudden even in our ministry or even in our life probably we might be struggling to overcome some particular sins still actually we are patient lord uh, you work in me in such a manner that i'll be able to obey your word that word should be fulfilled that i should be able to uh, rejoice always i should be able to do everything without complaining or murmuring i should be able to give thanks in everything i should be able to pray in the spirit always he, uh, ephesians 6:18 uh, 
to always to pray unceasingly lord i should be able to you have to fulfill that in me should be able to overcome all known sin uh, romans 6:14 sin shall not be master over me for you are not under law but under grace so lord so we need patience all on a sudden we um, uh, are not experience all the promises fulfilled in our lives but slowly uh, when we see jesus spiritual authority and how his life blessed so many people lord how much more of the power of the holy spirit i need so we need patience and endurance so with endurance uh, we are running let us run with endurance the race that is set before us we are choosing not our own path lord has already chosen the path for us uh the circumstances where we already saw uh, acts 1726 i believe uh, last weeks we saw that verse lord has set up boundaries and habitations and times you know there is a, a, a verse a very great reassurance actually uh acts chapter 17 <coughs> verse 26 he made from one man that is adam every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth having determined god has determined their appointed that is our appointed times that means which century which part of the century which year we should be born which date we should be born which and uh, second we should be born and which second we will die or uh, you know when the lord is going to come back when our life, whichever happens when our when, the, when our life ends so our appointed time and the boundaries of our habitation from this time to this time where my daughter my where my son should be in kerala or tamil nadu or in pune or in uh, hyderabad <laughs> or in uh, oratnad <laughs> or wherever <laughs> in some place uh, wherever you know the lord has placed us uh, uh, he has uh, uh, boundaries of our habitation so that in this boundary within this boundary we would be able to seek god verse 27 if perhaps they might grope for him and find him the whole world is in a spiritual darkness we need to grope for him and find him though he is not far from each one of us if we humble ourselves uh, the lord is near to the broken hearted psalm 34:18 the humble ourselves the lord will reveal himself to us uh, if we become like a little babe uh, and like the wise and the prudent and the intelligent uh, who trust in their own intelligence and prudence but if you humble ourselves and uh, uh, look unto the lord in simple faith he will reveal himself to us and we will be able to find him and we will be finding him if we seek him from with all our hearts uh, jeremiah 29 verse 13 says that if you seek uh, seek me with all your heart i will let him find me like that uh, god says over there jeremiah 29 13 just after that verse of uh, you know i have plans for your welfare not for calamity just after that verse uh, god has plans for our welfare not for calamity uh, jeremiah 29 11 most of us are familiar with that verse and verse 12 says when you know that you have plans for your welfare then you will call upon me and come and pray to me uh, and you know it just because god has got plans for welfare for our life that doesn't become all automatically fulfilled uh, you know if you turn to i mean i hope all of us are familiar with that passage but still when we are meditating on this race that is set before us it's always good to uh, see this verse jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that i know the plans that i have for you especially uh, when i had a year end <laughs> in the uh, the verge of beginning a new year of course god has planned for our welfare yesterday also i was telling uh, the uh, telling our fellow believers here in the malayalam meeting about john 150 <laughs> that the lord ministered to my heart uh, as something for the new year john 1 verse 550 uh, and uh, there jesus is telling nathaniel john 150 you will see the latter part of that verse you will see greater things than these so god is a god of hope uh, that will be able to see greater things spiritually uh you know in our own personal life in our family life in our church life in our land and that is a similar verse jeremiah 29 11 for i know the plans that i have for you declares the lord plans for your welfare not for calamity to give you a future and a hope uh it is not the earthly comforts or luxury but actually what has got a particular plan for our life and uh, you know uh, that is the race that is set before us there is a boundaries of a habitation acts 1726 we were seeing now and uh, with uh, so god has a plan 
for our welfare and how that plan would be fulfilled first well then you will call upon me call upon me you know just because god has got plans god has plans for everyone but uh, you know for majority of the people they do not even choose jesus and they go end up in eternal destruction but even for the believers they want to do their own will most of the times in their lives and uh, most of the plans that god has for them doesn't get fulfilled but actually for a true disciple of christ god can fulfill all the plans so for that what we have to do then you will call upon me we have to call upon the lord we have to seek him we have to come and pray to him and then he will listen to us verse 12 and you will seek me when you seek me and uh, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart you are whole heart oh lord really fulfill all the plans you have for my life lord i do not want to hinder your plans for this new year uh, in any way lord i want to surrender myself i want to run the race that is set before me lord in this 2022 you have set a race uh, uh, two more days uh, to reach 2022 and lord a race that you have set before me and lord i want to run with endurance looking unto jesus the author and finisher of my faith and lord you have already set before me that race i do not need to pave the way for that by my own cleverness or anything lord but lord i want to humble myself and be enlightened by the holy spirit to see your footsteps before me and walk in the way that you have walked before me uh, you have already create uh, you already prepared the good works uh, uh, that uh, you that uh, you have created me for Uh, we read, read that we already read that in Ephesians 2:10 we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them if we walk with Jesus in humility taking his yoke upon us we'll be able to fulfill all the good works so the, you know good works doesn't necessarily mean that we are helping the whole world or we are becoming a great worldwide pizza blessing every family uh, you know every uh, person actually whatever god has planned us probably in our own family in our neighborhood in our church some people in you know, our contacts and there when god extends the boundaries in us will let him do that and lord whatever good works it can be a, a you know ministry of encouraging others appreciating others lifting up their spirits and encouraging them to follow the lord or guiding them to the lord or encouraging them with the word of god or sending some greetings to them or helping them in their time of need in whatever way the lord leads us or uh, even through a profession we can help others we can bless our children uh, the way we conduct ourselves in our home and uh, and how we can be witness for him in our workplace you know play in our times of travel wherever whenever we come in contact with people so whatever the good works god has prepared beforehand uh, we can you know lord you have already uh you have already paved the way uh that new and living way the narrow way the way of the cross the way of life the way to the tree of life lord you have already set before me and help me to see your footsteps what is jesus footsteps not my will but your will not my will just like the left and right foot not my will but your will not my will but your will uh, john 6:38 and matthew 26:39 jesus says not my will but your will of father in the garden of gethsemane also matthew 26:39 not my will that is what jesus said all the time uh, that was the it was just the laptop it was just the heart beat steadily steadily <laughs> the you know the heart the heart rhythm of jesus was not my will of father but your will uh so that is the footsteps of jesus and that is the most blessed life we think that if you end up only doing god's will that will be the boring life is what the devil would want to tell us but actually doing god's will when the lord guiding us and filling us with his holy spirit and the oil of gladness and joy in our life that is the most blessed that is the most beautiful happiest life that is the most fulfilling life that we can ever walk on the face of the earth and so uh, the race that is set before us let us run with endurance and let us fix our eyes on jesus verse 2 that in our eyes has to be fixed on jesus and that word fixing our eyes is uh, aforavo uh, aforavo is a combination of two words apo and horavo apo means separation horavo means to see with the eyes so aforavo means uh separating ourselves so turning away our attention from other things and fixing our attention on something that is a four hour so that means all the other distractions all the other things lord i am taking my eyes away from all that and i am focusing on you alone 
uh, to turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on Jesus like we sing in that song turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and all the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace so fixing our eyes on Jesus and we already saw uh, song of songs chapter 2 verse 6 and chapter 8 verse 3 the bride saying to the bridegroom let your left hand be under my head and let your right hand embrace me so when we are filled with the holy spirit we can experience the touch of the lord and uh, his uh, restraining influence in our life like uh, the love of god constrains me uh, <laughs> paul says in second corinthians 5:14 uh, love of god constrains me having concluded this shall we turn to that that is the you know when the lord embraces us with this left hand under my, under our head and right hand embra- uh, uh, around us that means actually we cannot go and uh, you know uh, go the way that we want <laughs> but rather he is leading us uh, even when our eyes uh, when our head tends to go down and get discouraged and get weary and tired he is the lifter of our head psalm 3 3 we already saw that verse in psalm 3 3 also uh, that he is the glory and the lifter of our head and uh, so he alone can lift our heads so second corinthians 5 uh, verse 14 for the love of christ controls us or constrains us uh, there is a you know compulsion of love having concluded this uh, that one died for all there is jesus died for all therefore all died we all died in christ and he died for all so that though they who live that is we people who live who are living today might no longer live for ourselves but for jesus who died and rose again on our behalf so jesus died and rose again on our behalf so when he died i also died in christ myself my ego i my flesh was crucified in christ jesus and and i am i am uh, uh, when i surrender myself i am acknowledging that myself was crucified and the holy spirit floods my heart and the holy spirit is living the life of christ through me in me and through me it is no longer i who live but christ who lives in me i am not living for myself but i am living for him i am living for jesus i am allowing jesus to live through me when i abide in christ jesus abides in us jesus abiding in me means jesus is dwelling in me jesus is living in me for that i need to abide in christ i need to be in the most holy place surrendering myself to the lord when i abide in the lord that means when i abide in the spirit only is the lord jesus the holy spirit is there uh, with the presence of the lord jesus so when i abide in uh, abide in my spirit that means when i live in my spirit the spirit realm not in my soul or body realm but rather when i surrender my self will and enter the spirit realm by the fullness of the holy spirit then i am abiding in the most holy place in that whatever air conditioned room we were saying <laughs> you know all uh, around all around uh, yeah uh, of course tribulations are going around uh, in the uh, all uh, all over the world but i am in christ i am in the presence of god in the most holy place in, a, in the spiritual realm when the holy spirit has come into our spirit uh, the holy spirit is the spirit of heaven so he makes the atmosphere of heaven uh experienced in our spirit as if we are reach the heavenly place there in the true tabernacle in heaven so that is the restra- the restraining influence constraining influence of the lord's love the love of christ controls me 14 so i cannot live for myself the love of god is controlling me the love of god is constraining me that i shouldn't uh, stray away from this simple pure devotion to the christ but rather i'd be uh, bound to him with the cords of love and uh, so i am fixing my eyes on jesus and for my eyes to be fixed on jesus i need to humble myself uh, and surrender myself totally to the lord to the utmost of the light god has given me at all times then the lord will make sure that the supply of grace through the holy spirit will uh, keep gushing into my life from the holy uh, from the throne of the god and the lamp the water of life crystal clear as uh, crystal clear as uh, uh water of life which is crystal clear as uh, you know revelation 22 we read about that water of life there is a holy spirit revelation 22 verse 1 then he showed me the last chapter of the bible revelation 22 verse 1 then he showed me a river of the water of life that is the river of the holy spirit clear as crystal there is no blemish clear as crystal so transparent 
uh, no blemish uh, you know so holy and pure the real purity of heaven coming from the throne of god god the father and of the lamb the lord jesus christ the triune god is seen there in the last chapter of the bible even the first chapter of the bible revelation 1 1 2 and 3 is uh, god the father son and the holy spirit uh, god created the heavens and the earth genesis 1 1 god the father and the holy spirit hovering over the face of the earth verse 2 the holy spirit and verse 3 let they be god said let they be light so god's word is there god's word is jesus himself john 1 2 and 14 we read there so uh, the tri- trinity is there uh, triune god is there in the beginning verses of the bible the first chapter of the bible and the last chapter of the bible revelation 22 1 uh, then he showed me the river of uh, the water of life holy spirit is there throne of god the father and lamb the lord jesus christ is there and towards the end of the bible also of course the triune god of course is there you know there we uh, read about verse 17 about the holy spirit and uh, god will wipe away uh, uh, god will take uh, sorry take away his part from the tree of life verse 19 god the father and come lord jesus verse 20 we read there the last verses of the bible scriptures also we see the triune god and that is the water of life when when i surrender myself when i keep myself humble before the lord uh, when i take up the cross then i'll be able to follow him that means when i die to my will and embrace his will in my life then uh, the holy spirit will flood my heart flood my spirit and my inner man my spirit is the inner man and my inner man has got, has got also a head and the uh, the holy spirit the lord is the lifter of our head uh, as we read in psalm 3 3 so the holy spirit will make sure that our inner eyes are, are fixed on jesus whatever we do we are uh, of course we are doing so many things of a secular work and uh, the mundane earthly things of a, uh, you know daily routine and uh, we are traveling or we are buying and selling we are talking to people but in all that we can abide in the presence of the lord just like brother lawrence who was a uh, cook in a uh, catholic monastery many centuries ago in paris uh, he was a devout disciple of the lord he has written that uh, book uh, actually his letters were compiled as a book practice of the presence of the lord for the lawrence if you search in the google uh, you will get that and um, there he says how even when he was uh, in the midst of the clatter of the plates and the, uh, what to say the noise of the kitchen and even when other people were demanding so many things to be taken from the kitchen and on in the midst of all that Uh, apparent turmoil outside in the world you have tribulation and turmoil and chaos and all but uh, in me you have peace he was at peace he had as peace and as uh, much of the presence of sense of the presence of the lord as he would be having when he would be partaking of the lord's table <laughs> that is what he is testifying over there and uh, of course in my own life also i can uh, you know by the lord's grace i had a glimpse of that more and more the lord is helping me you know uh, the more our self will and our self is broken uh, you know the more the holy spirit will be able to flood our hearts and we'll be able to in whatever we are doing there is a connection there is a praying in the spirit ephesians 6:18 says that pray in the spirit at all times and pray unceasingly for the throne is 5:17 that's a connection with the lord 24/7 and rejoice in the lord always rejoice not outside rejoice in the lord that means in this holy realm in this air condition to <laughs> what i you know i mean actually why uh, some of you uh, wouldn't have been in the beginning air condition room what i mean is that just like if there is an air condition room where there is very cool air and outside it is hot and humid outside so as long as you are in the room of course there is cool atmosphere so like that in the presence of the lord there is uh, fullness of joy and peace if you are not experience the fullness of joy and peace that means you are strayed away somehow uh, in the from the presence of the lord so uh, yeah so fix our inner eyes on jesus and he is the author and that word author we already saw ahigas chief leader prince or the captain pioneer he is the uh, captain of our salvation hebrews 2:10 the uh, there also we read here in nsb i think it is written author of our salvation uh, hebrews 2 verse an author of their salvation that author that is the ahigas one who leads Uh, one, one who is leading uh, one who is who is starting and leading that is the author uh, just like you know the faith 
uh, the lord is ordering in our hearts the lord is writing faith in our hearts uh, in our spirit uh, in the tablets of human hearts the lord is writing a letter second corinthians 3 also we read read about that and uh, this letter is written by not with human ink but with the uh, spirit of god if you turn to second corinthians 3 there we read that Paul says that to his spiritual children in Corinth you are our letter written in our hearts known and read by all men be manifested that you are a letter of Christ cared for by us written not with ink but uh, with the spirit of the living god not on the tablets of stone but on the tablets of human hearts so uh, the moment we are born again we got a new spirit and in that spirit the holy spirit is writing the holy spirit is a finger of god we uh, saw that already uh, when we were seeing hebrews chapter 8 we compared uh, two verses of the bible matthew 12 28 and luke 11 20 the, uh, where jesus says i cast out uh, demons by the spirit of god he says in one gospel and in another gospel he says i cast out demons by the finger of god so uh, spirit of god is the finger of god that is the holy spirit writing in our spirit in the tablets of human heart in the old testament it was in the stony tablets the law was written in the tablets of human heart jesus is the author jesus is writing something uh, what is he writing he is the author of our salvation he is uh, he has given saved us from the penalty of sin and uh, from the power, power of sin he is saving us and from the presence of sin he will save us one day when he comes back and he is the author of our faith also that means he alone can instill faith in our hearts and we already saw faith is a part of the fruit of the holy spirit not only faithfulness but faith also the word pistis uh, in greek is the the word that is used for faith all throughout the new testament and that is the same word that is used over there in galatians 5:20 to 23 also so uh, jesus alone can author and perfect faith last week we were seeing that jesus perfects love in us we were seeing some verses from first john 2 and all first john 2 uh, we were seeing that uh, the love of god being perfected in us uh, first john 2 5 but whenever whoever keeps his word in him the love of god has truly been perfected when we surrender ourselves and allow the holy spirit to keep his word in our life then the love of god has been perfected it means actually when we surrender to the promptings of the holy spirit uh, we will be all the more full of the love of god uh, jesus himself says that in john 15 also keeping a finger here in first john we turn to john's gospel chapter 15 verse 10 jesus says if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love so when we keep his commandments by surrendering ourselves and allowing the holy spirit to empower us to keep his commandments in our life then we are abiding in his love the love of god is being perfected in us that means perfect we saw that word perfect that word is telio that means to the end to bring to completion just like if there is a cup it can be full and the more uh, you know and uh, you know we all know the example that brother zag uses cup and then if it is a mug or a bucket or a tub the just just like the capacity increases it can be full to different measures so like that the anointing the power of the holy spirit uh, can fill us with more and more fullness and quantity when we take up the cross and die to ourselves the lord will increase our capacity and uh, the more we keep his word the love of god is perfected to a greater degree to a greater degree we will be full of the love of god and we saw the similar word perfecting of love uh, we all also saw in verse t- uh, chapter 4 uh, coming back to first john first john chapter 4 verse 12 no one has seen god at any time but if we love one another god abides in us and his love is perfected in us no one has seen god at any time but if we love one another if we love the holy spirit to flood us with his love and we are able to love one another god is abiding in us god is dwelling in us and the love of god is perfected in us the, the love of god is complete in us and then also uh, after that also we saw verse 17 hebrews uh, sorry first john 4 17 by this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he saw we in this world uh, by this 
uh, when we abide you know the verse 16 says god is love and the one who abides in love abides in god and god abides in him when the when the lord is abiding in us love is perfected in us and verse 18 also says there is no fear in love perfect love casts out fear but because fear involves punishment but the one who fears is not perfected in love so the lord wants us to be perfected in love that means according to the capacity we have to be complete to be full of the holy spirit and the fruit of the holy spirit love and the holy fruit of the holy spirit is faith also so we have we can be perfected in love and we can be perfected in faith also that is jesus is the perfecter of faith you know some version says finisher of faith but a more accurate translation in nasb is more accurate there hebrews 12 2 he is a perfecter perfecter that mean uh, the, you know that uh, uh, root word uh, is telio uh, he is the one who was perfecting our faith uh, actually you know in many situations we may think that we are lacking in faith but if we go along this race in this new and living way jesus being the forerunner uh, jesus entered jesus being the forerunner and he has entered the most holy place through the veil through the rent veil along the new and living way the way of the cross if we walk along this way we will find that you will have increasing faith as days go by by the lord's grace you know i am able to experience that i believe i have more faith in the lord today than i had of course last year and probably i hope even last month and probably even yesterday you know as days go by and we then we go along this way you know we are not perfect we are not sinlessly perfect or anything you know no need to say that but you know only when christ comes again we will be sinlessly perfect but you know according to the capacity and the light god gives us we can be have a increasing measure of faith bible says about the measure of faith also we know that in uh, romans chapter 12 about the measure of faith that god has granted to each one uh, so that means according to the measure of the holy spirit you know some people might be uh, very skeptical oh, how can you say measure of the holy spirit holy spirit is a person but actually if you see the bible uh, all the holy spirit is a person uh john 334 says that god the father gave jesus the holy spirit beyond measure and also uh, luke 1113 says that if you being evil how to give how you know how to give good gifts to your good gifts to your children how much more the holy how much more the heavenly father will give the holy spirit to those who ask so they are it is already the children who is asking the father that means as children they are, they already have the holy spirit and Uh, how much more uh, you know uh, the father is asking well, the fa- father will give the holy spirit to the children who already have the holy spirit how much more the father will give uh, like that so that means actually you know uh, more of the holy spirit and even first john 413 says that uh, even i have uploaded a video in that youtube channel is it right to uh, ask for more of the more more of the holy spirit uh you know in this i have referred all the, i mean i think in the beginning uh, around some 2 or 3 years ago i uploaded that video probably you'll be able to uh, get it if you search uh, is it right to ask for more of the power of the holy spirit there also i'm referring to that verse in first john 413 if you turn to of course we are in romans now but i'll turn to <laughs> turn for a while to first john 413 where it says if we uh, by this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his holy spirit of his spirit that means ek out of that is a of that is a word there that means he has given us of his spirit that also refers to a measure of the holy spirit and uh, uh, and of course in the old testament also in numbers and all we read about uh, about uh, you know uh, god Uh, the uh, holy uh, the measure of the holy spirit that was upon moses god took from him and gave to uh, uh, you know many people to share moses burden uh, numbers 11 uh, if you turn to numbers 11 uh, there verse 25 numbers 11 25 then the lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him he took off the spirit who was upon him that means who was upon uh, jesus uh, sorry moses and placed him 
placed this Holy Spirit upon the seventy elders. When the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not know, did not do, did not do it again. So he, he took off the Spirit. That phrase uh, there also we read. So we can ask of more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, although Holy Spirit is a person, we can have more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, scripturally, it is right. So uh, Romans twelve. Uh, Uh, yeah about the measure of faith <laughs> uh, yeah verse 3 uh, so of course romans 12 1 and 2 <laughs> i don't know whether it, there is one single meeting where we have in mentioned romans 12 1 and 2 living uh, giving us as a living sacrifice we always say that uh, and renewing our minds verse 2 and the next verse uh, when our mind is renewed you know how our thing our thinking would be verse 3 for for through the grace given to me through the power of the holy spirit uh, given to me the uh, uh, paul says i say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think uh, but to think so as to have sound judgment sober estimate about yourself as god has allotted to each a measure of faith you know some people might have more faith to uh, you know do something for the lord but don't try to imitate that and uh, try to compete with somebody else but according to the faith that you have and even uh, verse 6 the latter part uh, or even uh, verse 6 since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us each of us is to exercise them accordingly if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith so there is a proportion of faith measure of faith uh, and um, there is a measure of grace also uh you know they we read in second corinthians that we can receive the grace of god in we uh, second corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 and working together with him we also urge, urge you not to receive the grace of god in vain mm, so uh if you receive the grace of god we need to respond to that grace of god and uh, uh utilize that for the lord's glory otherwise we'll be receiving the grace of god in vain and the lord won't be able to give us grace again because god gives grace only to the humble and humble people will be able to uh, utilize it for the uh, you know to exercise that grace for the glory of the lord in their uh, can uh, contact and in their ministry and everything and if you are not utilizing that if you are stagnant like a reservoir not like a channel where there is a output also then actually you are receiving the uh, grace in vain Uh, whatever in the according to the measure of our faith we can exercise uh, prophesying is actually not foretelling the future uh, Ro- romans 12 6 says about prophecy so first corinthians 14 3 clarifies what prophecy in the new testament is one who prophesies speaks to men for edification exhortation and consolation when we speak to build up others when we speak from the spirit from the power of the holy spirit and uh, you know to edify others of course from the word of god on the basis of the word of god it if i build up others and edification exhort others challenge others to lift us uh, lift others and comfort uh, uh, you know challenge and encourage and uh, exhort them uh, edification exhortation and consolation comforting and consolation and uh, giving uh, you know uh, reassuring words and comfort and encouragement and all so that is the Uh, prophecy so that also some people might be able to do uh, in a little more lengthy manner some people uh, might be able to do uh, you know if they keep on saying sometimes it might be boring so according to the measure of faith we can do that is what romans 12 3 says so and uh, uh, yeah so coming so he is the perfecter of our faith uh, and uh, acts if you turn to acts chapter 6 we read about stephen who is an young man uh, you know probably younger than many of us uh, you know he would have been in his we don't know 20s or 30s uh, and uh, he uh, acts chapter 6 uh, the testimony the holy spirit says about him verse 5 and even verse 3 uh, select uh, we will select men of good reputation full of the holy spirit and of wisdom and they are selecting verse 5 uh, stephen first of all stephen man full of faith and of the holy spirit you know what a testimony and then of course many other names are also written over there and uh, so man full of faith and of the holy spirit he was full of faith because he was full of the holy spirit there also we get the indication that 
ఫ్రూట్ ఫేత్ ఇస్తే పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద గిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫ్రూట్ ఆఫ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ దర్ ఇస్ గిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఫేత్ ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ కోర్ దెన్ ట్వెల్వ్ వీ రీడ్ అబౌట్ ద గిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఫేత్ వే దర్ ఇస్ ఎ ఫేత్ టు అకంప్లిష్ సమ్ మెరకులస్ థింగ్స్ అండ్ యు నో ఐ ఫర్డ్ అబౌట్ జార్జ్ ముల్ల అండ్ ఆల్ హ్యావ్ ఎ గిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఫేత్ ఐ మీన్ యాక్చువల్లీ హీ హ్యాడ్ ఫేత్ ఇన్ ద లాడ్ యు నో ఇట్ వాస్ ఎ గిఫ్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఫేత్ దట్ ద లాడ్ గేవ్ హిమ్ టు వాట్ టు సే టు కీప్ ఆల్ దోస్ ఆఫన్స్ అండ్ టేక్ కేర్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ and uh, you know uh, his life proved that he had the real gift of faith if he tried to imitate him <laughs> you know we will be ending up starving the poor orphan children only so uh, you know there is a gift that god gives actually but we all can have the fruit of faith uh, so we might have another particular peculiar ministry in the body of christ so whatever function god has given us we can so he is the uh, author and perfecter of our faith and uh and this jesus he is he can only perfect our faith as we walk along the way of the cross and he for the joy said before him joy of fellowship deeper fellowship with the father uh, the joy and the rest and the hope and raise all are set before us uh for the joy said before him endured the cross when he so uh yesterday one brother was asking me how can i you know i am not able to brother when i think about taking up the cross i feel very oh it is very heavy how can i <laughs> take up the cross <laughs> so i is quote in the hebrews 12 to jesus for the joy that before he endured the cross he always look forward to the joy of resurrection the joy of deeper fellowship with the father just like uh, you know when a woman is going through birth pangs uh, she is looking forward to the joy of having the baby with her so like that uh, you know there is a joy of resurrection after the death there is resurrection when we humble ourselves of course there is a, a death there is a suffering in the flesh there is a death in the self there is a pain uh, there in that sense when there is an absence of we are not indulging in the pleasures of the flesh so that means the absence of pleasure is suffering so there is a suffering in the flesh of course uh, but actually when we die to ourselves of course the holy spirit will come and fill our spirit all the more and there is a joy of the resurrection and when there is a death there is a resurrection by the power of the holy spirit we are entering the through the uh, you know taking up the cross is actually going through that new and living way and we are that a new and living way is an in, not an end in itself the end the outcome is we are there in the most holy place in the presence of god there is fullness of joy and for that joy this is endured the cross today also we can also endure the cross only of course it is not enjoying the cross but it is so accurate and realistic it is enduring the cross of course you know there is a pain there when uh, when, when we undergo some uh, things that we do not like uh, when we say no to our own will with respect to the money and honor and pleasures of this world when we humble ourselves of course there is a breaking of the self will there is a enduring of the cross but for the joy said said before us we see the joy of a deep fellowship with the lord with the father yeah, will be able to endure that and uh, uh, and for the uh, and he jesus endured the cross and he despised the shame uh, he despised or think little or nothing of catafoneo uh, catafoneo is the word he used over there that means uh, think little or nothing of he didn't think of the shame at all he despised the shame he oh the shame of the cross of course uh the literal cross of jesus of course there was a shame of being half naked on the cross and all and that also he despised he didn't mind uh he was not bothered about uh, suffering for our sakes because he loves us so much and even while taking up the cross in our daily practical life also there is a shame people might make fun of us or the these people are very other worldly people very uh, are you the only holy person are you the only spiritual person oh you think you know everything you you people only know god oh you people only go to heaven we are all going going to hell as uh, so like that people might make fun of us and call us names or might ostracize us or, or they may not include us in their company they may not call us or invite us for their probably their functions or anything uh, so there is a shame in all that despising me oh that is that shame and come to what shame jesus underwent on the cross for my sake you know uh, these shame and it's nothing <laughs> so despising the shame and then jesus sat down at the right hand of the throne of god uh, in the so he literally he sat down at the right throne of god after ascending to heaven uh, you know dying resurrection and then ascending to heaven literally he sat down at the throne of god but all throughout his life 
he was sitting at the throne of god he was always in the bosom of the father john 118 says that he who is in the bosom of the father uh, uh, you know he has explained the father so he was uh, not only he from all eternity he was in the bosom of the father even while on this earth also as as a man when he walked on the face of the earth he was still in the bosom of the father because he always endured the cross humbled himself and received the spirit beyond measure and he experienced the presence of the father and experienced the rest in the bosom of the father uh, and uh, so yeah literally uh, jesus sat at the right uh, right hand of the throne of god at the end of his life after ascending to heaven but spiritually jesus was always uh, you know he endured the you know it is actually you know all these things are simultaneously happening going through the way of the cross and uh, sit, uh, despite, uh, and sitting down at the uh, right hand of the father uh and that uh, happens throughout our life the way of the cross you can experience uh you know being seated in the heavenly places you know spirit the lord has already seated us in the heavenly places ephesians 2 6 and 7 and uh, so when we surrender ourselves and allow the holy spirit to enlighten us and fill us and flood us we'll be able to experience in a spiritual realm being seated with the lord in the heavenly places at the right hand of jesus uh, you know that the, the beautiful thing in psalm 1611 uh, you will make known to make you will psalm 1611 we all are familiar with that verse you will make known to me the path of life the uh, new and living way in your presence is the fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forever more recently only in the lord enlightened me to see what is at the right hand of jesus at the right hand of jesus is the bride <laughs> is none other than the bride at the right hand of the father jesus says there Uh, and at the right hand of jesus on the same throne the bride of christ is seated over there and we are called to be the bride of christ and uh, psalm 46:9 says that uh, at the right hand of the king stands the queen uh, in uh, with the gold from ophir uh, uh, psalm 45 uh, psalm 45 of course is the bridal psalm there jesus the bridegroom and we the bride uh, and of course that literal a uh, bride bride group that all symbolism is also they uh, so psalm 45 verse 9 kings daughters are among your noble ladies and at your right hand stands the queen in gold from off at your right hand so at the right hand of the king king of kings uh, king of kings and lord of lords is the bride of christ we each one of us are called to be there and at the right so at the right hand of god there are pleasures forever more that is the you know the intimacy that the bride can have with the bridegroom uh, the, the in the spiritual realm there is a fullness of joy and uh, uh, that is what we are called to experience in the presence of the lord we can we can also sit down at the right hand of god of course that literally will happen uh, we can sit down at the right hand of the lord with the resurrection body uh, in eternity if you overcome and become the bride of christ revelation 321 revelation chapter 3 verse 21 says he who overcomes i will grant to him revelation 321 to the church in laodicea uh, he who overcomes i'll grant to him to sit down with me on my throne as i also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne so that is a great promise the worst of the church the laodiceans is the greatest of the promises uh, of course all the promises uh, there to the churches are great promises only but uh, you know even to that backslidden church even if you repent and come back and overcome i'll be able to make you sit down at me sit down with me at my right hand as my bride and uh, that is the uh, that is overcoming life and verse 3 of course we put the topic way based on verse 3 but we won't have much time to uh, consider jesus who has endured such hostility coming back to hebrews 12 3 and consider jesus who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that he will not grow weary and lose heart when we consider this jesus who endured the cross and who endured such hostility by sinners against himself uh, of course even before his ministry because his brothers were unbelievers and all uh, 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 john 7 5 and 9 uh, john 7 uh, verse 4 and 5 we read that his brothers didn't believe in him so in a uh, yeah he, uh, john 7 5 not even his brothers were believing in him so in a house where at least four brothers are names are mentioned there in mark 6 3 
so four brothers are there who were not believing in jesus uh, you can imagine if four young men are there who are unbelievers there in there in our house how they would have pestered jesus and try to irritate jesus with all kinds of so he endured hostility from sinners even you know even as he grew up in the nazareth home and of course from the people who would have called him names that oh we know he is a son of mary we don't know who is his father is his mother became pregnant before uh, she got married like that there would have been many rumors and false stories uh, and so many ridicule and all jesus would have faced so hostility by sinners uh even while he was growing as a boy as a man and of course when his ministry began the pharisees sadducees especially the pharisees always very much irritated at him and they, they wanted to kill him they wanted to throw stones at him they wanted to throw him from the cliff <laughs> what all things they tried to do to, you know just you know jesus came down as an ordinary human being they tried to throw him off the cliff look for uh you know in that synagogue after uh, outside the synagogue of nazareth we read there and uh, you know john 7 yesterday we were seeing john 7 the last words sorry john 8 the last verse they uh, began to pick uh, pick up stones to throw him uh, throw at him and jesus hid himself and went out the temple we read there so you know now you know how the son of god had to hide himself from him being uh, hide himself from the stones being felt it at him so you know uh, that hostility by sinners uh, actually of course he was a friend of the real, the the so called sinners that people considered like the tax gatherers and the prostitutes and all were friends of jesus but the so called holy people who said we see they were the really blind people and they were uh, hostile to jesus and he endured that hostility year after year day after day week after week year after year he endured such hostility against himself Uh, when we consider that jesus then we will not be growing weary and losing heart we will not be tired we will not get spiritually tired then we know that how much jesus is suffering today <laughs> so we will be able to get encouragement from the path that jesus has trodden he was called a man of sorrows isaiah 53 verse 2 and 3 so but he was a, uh, he was oil, anointed with the oil of gladness hebrews 1:9 although there was so many externally there was so many sorrows but internally he was in the presence of the father and uh, all throughout he was anointed with the oil of gladness and he was always in the he said that even at the uh, previous day of his crucifixion he is saying that i am telling these things that my joy may be new and your joy may be made full john 15 11 so such a overflowing joy he had all the time even at the garden of gethsemane of course he had anguish and agony in his soul but of course in his spirit of course there was uh, overflowing joy in the holy spirit and that is what we read here you have not uh, you know so we will not get spiritually tired and lose heart and uh, we have not resisted to the point of shedding blood you know striving against sin so may the lord help us to consider jesus to fix our eyes on jesus who endured all the hostility and all the uh, adversities and all for our sake who endured the cross despising the shame think, thought nothing little of the shame and uh, uh, he sat down at the right hand of the father he, he is calling us to he is beckoning us he is calling us to sit with him at his right hand even today spiritually by overcoming the temptations and the trials that come our way by coming uh, through the by going along by running along the same way of the cross the race that is set before us So may the Lord help us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit all the more to fix our eyes upon this Jesus. Shall we close our eyes in prayer and look unto our Father? Thank you, Father, for helping us to have this uh, last Bible study of Hebrews in this year. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, your exceeding faithfulness, Lord. We want to thank you, give you all the glory. Thank you for giving us life and health. and not only this physical life above all the spiritual life the eternal life the very life of yours lord oh what a great privilege oh lord beyond what we can ever comprehend your very life the life of god the eternal life the divine nature you have instilled in our spirit through the holy spirit and you have enlightened to us your word through the holy spirit you gave us a great desire and thirst to know your word all the more deeper 
and lord you lord give us so many resources and lord thank you jesus praise be bow down before you and adore you and worship you thank you lord we want to fix our eyes upon you lord jesus we do not ever want to take away our eyes from you lord you are our blessed bridegroom our king of kings and lord of lords we want to have that it pleasures forever more at your right hand as your bride in the fullness of joy lord to enjoy the fullness of peace and fullness of love in your presence lord we want to abide in you lord jesus we want to abide in that most holy place in our spirit in the fullness of the holy spirit in the heavenlies in the most holy place in the paradise in your very presence to be broken and contrite and to dwell with you lord jesus the greatest privilege the greatest privilege in the whole universe thank you father for revealing to us lord the way of the cross the way of life thank you for the race that is set before us along the new and living way you being the foreigner and you have endured the cross despising the shame you sat down at the right hand of the father and lord we want to consider you who endured hostility against hostility of sinners against yourself and lord if you consider if we consider you we will never be discouraged or disheartened or uh, spiritually tired or feeling like giving up but rather lord we would be having all the more endurance to run this race with all the more vigor lord even if young men vigorous young men fall away and faint those who wait on the lord those who bind together with you lord jesus will renew their strength with uh, 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 with new strength renew their strength with the power of the holy spirit and lord we will be able to mount with wings like eagles and we will be able to so high in the heavenlies with you lord jesus our beloved bridegroom thank you jesus help us to live this heavenly life on the face of the earth all throughout lord not just in pieces but lord let it let that way of life the way of worship the way of living in the spirit and walking in the spirit lord uh, lord let it cover the all the moments of our life all the days of our life especially this coming new year help us to behold greater things than these that we have ever seen in our life so far greater spiritual heights in our personal life in our family life in our church lord in the land your name is going to be glorified ever more father thank you jesus we believe that thank you lord be it unto us according to your word yes lord we want to see the glory of the latter house being greater than the former you are a god of hope thank you father we worship you thank you praying for all the blessed families here bless them bless all of us together in the new year thank you for the gift of the new year that you are giving us we want to receive it from you and lord we want you to live through us all the more in this new year may your name be glorified in jesus precious sweetest name we pray amen